oh my goodness, it's going to get cold this weekend. It is going to be in the 50s today, though it's chilly this morning. But this weekend, temperatures are going to plummet and it's going to get, oh gosh, near zero degrees Fahrenheit. It is going to get bitter, bitter cold. So here are five garden musts that you want to do in these next few days to protect your precious garden and your precious plants from this bitter, bitter cold. So let's do a countdown one by one, five winter garden chores you want to do right now. Okay, I very dramatically said five garden musts. This isn't necessarily a must, but it's something that you will want to do before temperatures get really cold. So I want to make sure that I am as cozy inside as I am outside. And so I'm going to be doing some flower arrangements for this weekend. And I want to take some cuttings from this beautiful arborvita or maybe some of my abelias. It doesn't really matter. Anything that you might want to use in a flower arrangement arrangement so that you are surrounded by beauty when it really, really is cold inside. But you're not going to want to come out here when it's zero degrees. So do it now. Take some clippings from your evergreens or whatever, uh, at whatever you want to use in a vase. Do it now before it gets really, really cold. Well, this may not fall in the category of protecting your garden and your plants, but it's definitely a must for me because I don't want to be out here taking down my wreaths and my other Christmas decorations when the temperatures plummet. So I actually took down my wreaths and my outdoor lights a while ago, but I really hadn't put them up. Why? Because I was waiting for these brilliant wreath storage containers to arrive. Someone recommended these to me because they are lightweight. They are kind of flexible. They can fit in tight spaces if you've got, if you're compromised with the amount of storage that you have. And they're just very, very portable. So I've got two of my wreaths in here and I will put uh, I will put a link to these below. I actually am going to order more of them because I think they'll also be brilliant for things like bedding, pillows, things that you want to store and you want to make sure that they are watertight and will be protected. So you can just lie them flat, place your wreaths in. I've actually got three wreaths now in this one container. And I'm doing this today, my number one to do on my five winter garden must countdown, because today it is 50 degrees out. It may not even be, do you think it's 50 yet, Stuart? Mm, close. Um, anyhow, it's getting close, but it's still pretty cold. So I'm taking down these reeds. And I am also noting that on my wreaths, some of the ribbon needs to be replaced. And so on one of the wreaths, I already took off the red hanging strip with the grommet because I'm going to start working on replacing those earlier in the year. So when I get ready to put them up again next season, I'll have those ribbons ready to go. So I took one of the bows and one of the grommet hangers off of it to use as kind of a guide when I make new ones this year. So see what I mean? These are so portable. If you have to store them in your garage or in your basement, then you could just suspend them from some great big hooks. But again, they are so lightweight. And all of my wreaths were artificial wreaths. You can also store any of your artificial garland, any of those kinds of things in here. I also put in the extension cords, the timers, and everything. All of the lights were still working when I put them up. I did not remove the lights. And they are just, they're just like packaged and ready to go 
ready to decorate, like ready to eat, ready to decorate nice little packets next year that all I have to do is just bring them out and hang them. Well, right now, the pansies and the violas in this container planting look beautiful because it's really been relatively warm. That's all going to change this weekend when temperatures plummet. So my number two garden must is, well, first of all, it's a no brainer. You already know this, but as a reminder, make sure that you disconnect all of your hoses and if need be, even disable your in-ground irrigation system. But I've made sure that all of my hoses have been disconnected and I'm also making sure that all of my plantings like this one have really good drainage and they are not holding too much moisture which will then create a problem with root rot whether it's um, just a container where you've got bulbs planted or you've got evergreens and annuals like these beautiful pansies and violas so I noticed yesterday when I came out on my morning little walkabout that this pot you may remember it from our last Wednesday walkabout it previously had a boxwood in it and when I came out I noticed that after the wonderful rain that we had earlier in the week there was lots of standing water it was not draining and sure enough that would have killed that boxwood over time either very quickly or slowly so I removed the boxwood from this pot and transplanted it into a larger container which I'll, which I'll show you momentarily and then I'm going to unclog this pot before I plant something in it in the spring right now it's just going to lie fallow but any of your container plantings that are not draining adequately you want to make sure that you either unclog the drainage hole or you can do something like just turn them over and set them on their side so that they can drain that way before you have an opportunity to replant them and correct that drainage problem. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? Well, I scavenged a bunch of these uh, droppings from a cypress tree down the street that was kind of mixed in with some leaves. It's moist, it's wet, it's beautiful, and it will make a beautiful mulch for some of my containers. And that's my number three suggestion. After you have made sure that all of your container plantings are draining adequately, get some kind of mulch, whether it's purchased or it's free, like this. That as I said, I just foraged from down the street. Some people may have thought I was absolutely crazy, but look how beautiful that is. Look at how beautiful that is. That would be a good base for a container planting because it would break down over time. But I am putting a nice skirt or a blanket or whatever around this gorgeous Oakland holly that had been watered so much over the summer, some of the roots had been exposed. And so I want to make sure that it is in no way compromised when it gets really, really cold. So I am putting a whole layer of this beautiful, damp, warming and free mulch around the base. Now I've got another Oakland holly down here and I am happy to see that it too is draining adequately. These drainage holes are not clogged. So again, in line with my number three tip, just mulch that. And I think not only is it valuable and it's protective, but it's really beautiful. I've walked up the street 
less than a block away to the park up the street. And in the gutter, this is one of the things I notice when I'm rocking around the neighborhood. If I see really great garden roughage, things that I can use for mulch that's already been, I mean, look at this, it's already been kind of composted and pulverized in place, then I literally just scavenge some of this good stuff. Don't mind, Linda, clean. Yeah, yeah, don't mind, Linda. She is just working in the gutter. Now, some <laughs> people might be self-conscious about doing this, but people in my neighborhood by now, by now know that I'm a little strange and that I am a rabid gardener. And this stuff, you guys, look at how beautiful this is. It's moist, it's crumbly, and best of all, it's free. So I'm gonna get some of this. I mean, look at this stuff around the edge. It's really pulverized because all sorts of vehicles, motorized, baby carriages, bikes, whatever, have pulverized it. So it will just make really great mulch. And I'm not proud. This stuff is beautiful, it's free, and nobody will mind my foraging it. So I've got one of these garden trugs. This is great. I've had this one for years. I'll look online to see if I can find one to provide a link. And now I'm gonna take my gold home to mulch some more things. Well, it's been a while since I have shared an outfit of the day with you, but I definitely wanted to share this one because it's basically kind of geared around these wonderful pants. I got them as a birthday gift. They're nylon, they're waterproof, they're figure flattering, they're inexpensive, and more importantly, they are great for either, well, if it's snowing and you wanna go play in the snow, or if you wanna work out in your wet garden, they're brilliant for that. They're also brilliant because they have great pockets so I can put my cell phone in one, I can put seeds in the other. They're very, very comfortable. They're easy to move in. They're very flexible and I wanted to share these with you and definitely I'll put a link below. Um, but from top to bottom, my sunglasses are Ray-Ban, got them off of eBay. I have had this vest forever. It was a gift from my mother-in-law many, many years ago. It came from New York and Company. Um, my my turtleneck is just something that came um, from the Goodwill store. I don't even know what it was. My boots, my boots are hunter boots and I love them. And, and of course, I've got my cool job gloves with me. Now in the spirit of my word of the year, which is observe and my subtext, which is be prepared, <laughs> I am trying to be better prepared before I even go out and start working in the garden because now the garden is wet and I don't want to take, um, take off my boots to go inside or wear my muddy boots inside to get some Kleenex because I'm just getting over a cold. So that completes my outfit du jour. I thought you guys might want to know about these great pants as we all start to get back out in the garden as the weather warms or as we take preemptive measures to keep it protected from the winter cold. Well, this I guess is a three and a half because it really is the same concept. Only this time, it's not things that are, are in containers, but it's things in the ground. So you wanna make sure that things are mulched adequately. This is that Happy Grow Landscapers mix that I love so much that I get at Lowe's. And I have just mulched both of my Nuttle Oaks that were planted here on either side of the sidewalk that goes up to the cottage. Now I've got a little bit left and here's something else that I might want to mulch. I have been blowing onto all of my hydrangeas, um, all of my Encore azaleas, my uh, candy butterfly. I have really been blowing lots of leaves and things 
surrounding their root balls to serve as a mulch. If we hadn't gotten this great rain, I would make sure that they had been watered adequately, but we did get great rain and now I just need to make sure that every specimen is mulched appropriately before it gets really, really cold because I want to make sure that they are all nestled in and happy. Okay, number four, do you notice something missing? No longer is the social patio surrounded by topiary of any kind. Now for the summer, um, for the gardening season, I had Eugenia topiary here. They went away and they went to the greenhouse. They were replaced by my two standard Encore Azalea topiary that I put in this place, but I'm afraid that zero degrees might just be too cold for them. So I had the guys earlier because they were pretty heavy. I had them help me move them and we're gonna put them under cover in my garage. I did mulch them really, really well. They have been watered well, but topiary in particular, even if it didn't kill the Encore Zellia, it might at least killed it all the way back to its root system. And I really want that topiary form to remain intact if at all possible. So since I don't have a greenhouse, the guys helped me move them from this location. You can see the holes right here from this location um, into the garage. Now you may wonder, well Linda, are you going to put anything in here so that people don't trip and people don't fall into these holes? Well this isn't an area really that people walk and so no, I'm not really planning on it and they're especially not going to be walking out here when it's zero degrees. So I'm not going to be too concerned about that. And if a rabbit or a squirrel falls in, then I bet they know how to get back out. So that will probably answer that question. And so that is number four. Stuart, let's up with number five, my five winter garden musts to do to be prepared before the Arctic blast in the back. All right, number five you might recall that kind of uncharacteristically for me, I planted some greens late in the fall, mostly because I wanted to play with my new raised beds. And I have all sorts of greens that I just broadcast, lettuce greens and some Swiss chard on the corners, I've showed you this before, that I broadcast across the surface. Now, these guys are still very much intact. They're not doing a lot of growing because it's cold they're not getting a whole lot of light right now, and it's just not their season. But they are very much viable and still alive, and I want them to remain that way until it warms again, and hopefully I can get some production and I can harvest some greens. So I'm taking some of this garden gold that I excavated from from basically just the gutters, <laughs> from the curb in front of the park. And I'm just going to sprinkle some of this over the top to insulate these greens. It makes the green color shine. It does make the green color shine. It's really beautiful. This is, this is that bald cypress foliage, and doesn't it just look pretty? It's very satisfying. And so I am just going to cover these up in a blanket protective blanket that I think will hopefully insulate them enough without suffocating them so that they will indeed continue to grow when it gets warm enough. And if they don't for some reason, well, it was a 99 cent package of seeds and a gardening risk worth taking. And I really think the chard will be just fine and so I'm just going to mulch these guys pretty well. And the chard, you know, some of the upper leaves, they may go limp, they may complain, they don't like the cold, we don't like it either. Um, but boy, they'll be happy to see the sun just like us in the spring, and they'll come back better than ever. Okay. I don't want it to be too thick. Now again, when it really warms up, 
I will come out here and I will just gently rake back with my fingers the mulch that I've put in place. Now, because I don't want there to be any digging, I don't want those pesky squirrels or rabbits to do their thing, I am going to put these cloches in place and put my two tour in place and happily these um, they actually provide some kind of nice winter interest and in winter structure and garden ornament that I very much like um, but again it will protect them from any diggers and kind of hold that mulch in place now I'm going to do the same thing over here to my carrots which are doing pretty well. Here you can see the basil. I had some boxwood basil that was planted in the corners and it has obviously succumbed to the cold. It is not in any way frost hardy. Does it, could you smell that when I did that? Really? Oh, that's a nice thing. So I'm just gonna mulch these a little bit. I think these carrots being a root crop should be fine. And I want to preserve these because they already have some size on them. They will mature much more quickly and they will mature in time for me to then do another planting before it gets too hot for carrots. Though I might plant radishes, my favorite French breakfast radishes. And any, obviously, of this that breaks down, it doesn't have any chemicals in it or anything. They do not use any chemicals in, um, in the park. And it should just be fine. Now, I'm going to do it to my peas as well. Though they might be a little more iffy and obviously I didn't get supports. This was very much a garden risk um, that I took. The, obviously they were too ram rambunctious in scale for just these these little miniature two tours. But nevertheless, you did. You got to eat one. Look, there's one right there. And, and after we'll leave that in place because we'll take a pretty picture of that. You can see some of it is already and this actually may have succumbed to heat earlier. If it's not one thing, it's another. And we'll just do the same thing here, though I'm not going to remove any of the two tours. I am just going to mulch these. And as I started to say earlier, if any of, of this breaks down, then it will just make the soil quality that much better. It's good, good organic matter. Again, did I say it was free? Let me say that again. It was free. It was free. Every time I go on a walk, I see this kind of stuff in the street. And I, and I wish I had a bag or something to bring home. Now, like I say, don't be self-conscious. <laughs> if people think you're strange, digging things out of the curb, just say, no, I just need some of this to protect my plants from the freeze. And then they won't think you're absolutely Looney Tunes. Or even if they do, who cares? So there you go. There is my tip number five. Protect any vegetables as well by giving them a little blanket of mulch. Now, there are other things that need to be mulched, and these are probably the plants that I am most concerned about. These are my prized Little Miss Figgies from Southern Living Plant Collection. And I think what I'm going to do here in order to protect them is I'm going to bring in some straw, not hay. I think I've got that correct. Straw, not hay, because it won't have any weed seeds. And we will really mound that up. Maybe, I don't know, create some kind of cage or something, but really mound that up around these little Miss Figgies to protect them as much as possible 
Um, I see some of them even, not this one, but the other one, has some beginnings of some bud growth that are starting to erupt from some of the canes. So even though they probably won't die, they might die all the way back. And I want to preserve as much of this branching structure as possible. So they too will get a good mulch. Okay, I hope you guys, I hope all of these tips helped. We've got one more little bonus tip, and then we're gonna call it a Wednesday walkabout in the books. Okay, I'm finished with my outdoor chores, but you're never really completely finished until you record what you did in your garden journal. So I'm immediately going to go in. I'm going to talk about these five things. I'm going to record the date. I'm going to record the weather, the temperatures, and exactly what we did before this Arctic blast. So pull out your garden journal. We'll put a link below if you don't have one, because that will record for the future what you did on this day in 2024.